Hi there, welcome to the new video. Today I'll be talking about this very interesting paper that came out just after GPT and BERT and became really popular. It's titled as BART, Denoising Sequence to Sequence Pre-Training for Natural Language Generation, Translation and Comprehension. And it's from researchers from Facebook AI. So here BART stands for Bidirectional Autoregressive Transformers. So as it is already written in the title, it's a denoising sequence to sequence based architecture. And in this paper, they majorly talk about what was the pre-training scheme that the authors applied. So yeah, let's start with the abstract. We present BART, a denoising autoencoder for pre-training sequence sequence models. So BART is trained by corrupting the text with some arbitrary noise function and also learning to reconstruct the original text. Okay, so let me tell you a bit about how denoising autoencoder works. So let's consider some dense architecture. Let's say we have three layers, then two, and then again we have three units at this place. So this is the bottleneck layer that we have. And let's say we had three inputs, I1 to I3, which go over here. And at the output end, we show the same values over here again, which means we want to reconstruct these input values at the output end. So the model now needs to optimize on its encoder end, such that the thought vector or the bottleneck layer weights that it learns are optimized and compressed in such fashion such that now if decoder uses that representation to upscale those values to the same dimension of the input it should be able to do that without any loss of information so at the decoder and once you get some values let's say i hat 1 i hat 2 i hat 3 you calculate the loss over here which could be rmse or if it's a classification kind of a setting then you can have cross entropy and same values get propagated backwards to train the weights of both decoder and encoder so yeah, that's how a vanilla autoencoder basically works. Now talking about this in a sequence sequence setting, which is one of the things where BART is applied. So let's talk about good old LSTMs. So let's say these are three units and these are the three words that go into this. Here you get the thought vector, let's call it as T. Now let's say again you have new units, which is the decoder end. So this thought vector basically goes over here. You have a sequence starting token. Now this produces output O1. This goes over here, this produces output O2, this goes over here, this produces output O3. So I've shown this crisscross output going to input kind of architecture, considering the teacher forcing ratio is equal to zero, which means we always consider the output that I generate at previous step as the input to my next step. But yeah, this could be traded off and you can ha also have actual input showing over here. So yeah, let's say this is a scenario and these were your I1, I2 and I3. So now the loss would be calculated such that because these were my inputs, which means my ground truth is I1 should be here, I2 should be here, and I3 should be here. So these OIs that you see, right, is nothing but the argmax function that you applied over softmax over vocabulary at every time step. So once I get these O1, O2, and O3, I already know what it should have produced, which is I1, I2, I3. I take a cross entropy loss. I calculate that loss, let's call it as L and backpropagate to train the encoder and decoder weights. So that's how the denoising autoencoder basically works in a sequence to sequence architecture. But yeah, this is obviously LSTM. They talk about doing a stacked transformer units, which we'll see in a moment. And on top of this, they propose some pre-training objectives. So you might already know like pre-training and fine tuning is the new paradigm in natural language processing to how people are usually working with. So for example, in the case of BERT, you have this mass language modeling. In case of Pegasus, you have gap sequence prediction. In case of T5, you have span prediction and so on and so forth. So BART also proposes some different type of objectives, which helps it to generalize well for translation language generation kind of task. So with this background, let's move forward. So with BERT, as you already know, it is just the encoder part of the entire transformer sequence sequence architecture where the pre-training objectives on which it was trained was MLM and NSP, where MLM stands for mass language modeling and NSP stands for next sequence prediction. So in this figure, they have just mentioned about MLM, where the idea is, let's say you have a sequence of A, B, C, D, E. So you mask some random, some percentage of words from your input, which is shown with this dash over here. And at the output end, you just predict those words based on other words that occur in the same context and it's bidirectional in nature, which means at any point T1 and let's say T2, it will be able to observe A, C, and E. And similarly, this D also will be able to observe A, C, and E. And it's not sequential in nature, which means you'll first predict B, and then you can use that B also as context to produce D. That's not how it works. 
B and D are both produced simultaneously which means both of them cannot attend to each other in the input end as well. So talking about GPT now which is auto regressive in nature which means at any time step T let's say at this C point the model should be able to produce C by only seeing the things that happened to be in the past which means it can see the start token and A. And similarly for any time step let's say T2 which could be E at this point if the model is supposed to produce anything it will be able to just peek to its left to whatever has been inputted which is start token A, B and C and the arrow is single in this direction which means it is just unidirectional and there's no point it can peek to its right. So that's one of the major differences between BERT and GPT as well which makes them different in terms of their generation abilities. So now talking about BART so as we already saw, BERT and GPT were not sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture. BERT was only encoder and GPT was only decoder. Now here we have both encoder and decoder blocks. So let's say if I define a noise function phi that takes in some input and outputs some i hat, which is a noisy input. So I would have given this A, B, C, D and E. And the task of phi is to mask some random words. And the output would be A dash B dash E. So that is my i hat now. This goes to encoder. Encoder learns the representation of mass token and non mass tokens. It produces some thought vector over here. This goes to decoder, which is auto regressive in nature, which is of GPT style. Now the output end of this decoder is supposed to produce all the tokens over here, which include the mass tokens as well. So now you can see, right, that way the model is also learning to generate sequence of words in auto regressive fashion. Whereas it is also learning to produce some mass tokens which were there at the input end. So yeah, let's move forward. So we've already seen this model. Let us just recap. So it's a denoising autoencoder that maps corrupted document to a original document that it was derived from. It's implemented in a sequence to sequence model fashion with a bidirectional encoder, which is of word style and left to right auto regressive decoder, which is of GPT style. The objective is to optimize on the negative log likelihood on the original document. So yeah, this is something that we have already discussed while I was discussing the LSTM example where the loss is supposed to maximize on the likelihood, which is like probability of seeing an output O, which is a sequence of O1s, O2 till OK, given the input I's. Where the ground truth is also all the I's that you have. And then you calculate this cross entropy between this I's and all the O's that you have. Okay, let's move forward. So now talking about the main part of BART, which is the pre-training objective. So as we saw, since it is a denoising autoencoder, which means we'll have some transformation function that transforms the input by adding some noise. Now noise could be of different types. And finally, you'll be getting a noised version of the input, which goes to the encoder end and at the decoder end, you train it against the non-noised version. So that is the reconstruction loss that propagates backwards. So now let's see the list of functions that they define. The first is token masking. So this is same as what BERT did. They randomly sample some words from the input and replace those words with this mask token. And at the output end, they'll be producing what word has to be present against this mask token, which is the output of the decoder. Unlike BERT, where the output was at the encoder end itself. The second function is token deletion, where you delete some random tokens from the input where the model is supposed to produce input with the undeleted version of it. So this is a bit harder task for the model if you see because under the mass token, you were giving some positional inputs already. You already know the position where we see the mass token, but here I haven't produced any mass token. So let's say if my input is A, B, C, D, and E, this goes to my phi function, and my phi picks one random function, which is let's say token deletion at this point, it will produce A, C, D, and E, or it could be just let's say A, D, and E. So whichever I finally select, let's say one of them goes to my decoder, and my model is supposed to produce A, B, C, D, and E. Now it should already know like B was not there and C was not there. Although I haven't given any mass token, which would help supervise my decoder to know the exact position where it should insert those things. In this case, model is supposed to guess by itself what should be the correct output. So yeah, that is the second task, which is token deletion. And if you want to extrapolate this function, you can think of removing all the tokens from the input and the model is supposed to produce the entire sequence with an empty input, which is the hardest task that the model can do. Okay. The next is text infilling. So they have a figure I think over here. Yeah. So token masking we have seen like you mask B and D over here 
and model is supposed to produce the entire thing. Then we had token deletion, where you don't give the position where you deleted the things, which are represented by these hyphens or dashes, and model is still supposed to produce the entire input. The next was text infilling. So here you essentially mask group of words with a single mask token. And also these mask length could be different. So this is also inspired from span BERT. So let's see how it's also different from BERT. So in BERT you are doing a mask token for every word. Whereas in text infilling or span BERT, you essentially let's say choose two words if the span length is two and replace them with a single mask token. Rather than outputting two mask token for two different words, you give one single mask token for the entire span. So that is what text infilling does. But the span length could also vary. It need not be fixed, which was, I think, the case in SpanBird. So that is the third transformation. Now talking about sentence permutation, where the idea is to shuffle the lexical units of the input, which you are interested in. Let's say if you were to produce output and input, everything at the word level, which is that token. So you do the shuffling at the token level. So for A, B, C, D, E and two dots, this is the input that could be created. This goes to my model at the encoder and at the decoder end, it is trained against the actual input, which was a, b, c dot, d, e dot. And that is what model is trained against for the weights of encoder and decoder. And it should be able to produce the actual input over a couple of iterations. And the last transformation function that they propose is called document rotation, where they reverse the document. So if input was a, b, c, nothing that goes to encoder would be c, b, a but we would expect the model to produce ABC at the decoder output. So yeah, these are all the transformation functions that the BART proposes, which kind of challenges the model to really learn different aspects of the language and be robust to any kind of transformation that it could face. And this way, the model is also supposed to generalize well. Okay, let's move forward. So yeah, that was the pre-training for BART. Then they test out all the fine tuning stuff where they try out various classification tasks such as sequence classification and token classification and they also test the generation abilities with machine translation. So yeah, I think now we are done with the paper. So if you like such content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also share it across with your friends to whosoever is interested in such content. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye bye and take care.